Hi there, and I'm Locke, and we're going to do a little tutorial called Baby's First Game. And this is going to be about how to make a game in Game Maker with just the minimum amount of effort. Like, absolutely as close to zero as possible. So, first things first, we got to make some sprites, because you need to be able to see anything. I do have some default sprites here, but they're just for reference. We're going to start brand new. You always want to name your sprites something unique, such as such as not box. Uh, I like to preface my sprites with sp underscore. You can use dash. Actually, I don't think you can use dash, but I'm just going to call this one sp uh, square. And the default image is 32 by 32, which is good enough. Edit, new. 32 by 32, okay, double click, zoom in. That's a control mouse wheel, if you don't know that, which is okay. Now this is just gonna be a basic box, so we're just gonna use our box tool, nice black outline, mm, boop. And we're gonna fill this with light pink. There we go. Uh, this is our first box. Actually, that's too harsh of a pink. Let's dim this down a bit. Uh, there we go. Okay, now we'll go back to the straight black. Uh, no, a little straight line, straight across diagonally. I'm going to pick a complementing color, which I don't know off the top of my head, so we'll pick blue, just like this, for a nice little shade. All right, check mark. Uh, and don't center this one. Uh, this is just a example of something you can do really really fast that is fast yes and here's my reference picture which is pretty much the same it's just it's slightly transparent which is also helpful so actually i'm going to do that right now i'm just going to uh make this slightly transparent which i don't remember i think i just use transparent eraser so let's change the opacity to 64. Where's my eraser? Here's the eraser. And just uh, give this a nice little, oops, let's use a bigger thing. Give this a nice once over. There we go. So now we have a semi-transparent square as our first object. Okay, next. Um, insert sprite sp uh, run once. Edit sprite, new sprite, 32 by 32, double click, zoom in. Now, uh, run once is something that, well, it's similar to, I guess, RPG Maker events. They run once and then self-terminate, or you just don't use them ever again. So uh, this one, same deal, is a box, uh, nice big square, nice neutral middle color. But this one we don't need to make transparent. Instead, we're going to use the text give it a nice small text called run space once. Okay, that's too big. So we're gonna go do that again. Run hashtag once. Uh, there we go, that looks good. So this will be our run once sprite. This one can be centered because this one's not being used for edge collisions, which I'll show you about later. So okay. Uh, now we'll need a, well, I don't think we need a circle. We're good. We have square and run once. That's all we need. Okay. Now we go to our backgrounds. Uh, this is where you put any tile sets and background graphics that you want to use. I use the, uh, Oryx tile set, which is not free, but it's just an example. You can use whatever tile sets. And this is what it looks like. You can, you load background, and then you select your file. There you go. Uh, this tile set is 24 by 24 tiles. So you just change your properties and you get this nice good grid. But I don't know what tile set you're gonna use or if you're even gonna use tiles. So we'll just ignore that for now. Uh, the next most important thing is objects. Now we're gonna want uh, two objects. We're going to ignore all of these. These are just my references. We're going to create a new object. 
we're going to call this uh, O. Now, I like to name my objects to have them prefaced with O. Some people use OBJ underscore. I just like a big capital O. And we're going to call this solid. And we're going to give this the SP square. It's going to use physics. It's going to have a box for physics. And it's going to have no density. Actually, all of these can be zeros. Uh, and it starts awake. And it's not solid, not persistent. And it's currently visible. But we're going to turn that off later. So modify collision shape. Just uh, make sure this picture lines up correctly. And boom. We just made our first object. That is good. OK. But now we need a parent, because we want all of our collisions to actually collide with each other. So we're going to insert another object, and we're going to go O physics parent. That should be good enough. And we're going to just give it the same graphic, because this is not visible. And we're going to go add event collision with, um, Actually, uh, collision with um, well, I don't know. Actually, let's back this up. Uh, save changes. Right. What's my what's on my parent? Yeah, you can collide with yourself. Yeah. Okay. So, O physics parent, add event collision with O physics parent. Uh, you add a little comment. It could be anything. Lols. Because uh, that's just there uh, to make sure this is always firing. And what this is is anything with physics parent that collides with anything with physics parent will now do a collision. So we're going to go back to our old solid, our O solid, and give it a parent of physics parent. So now it's going to collide with anything that's also physics parent. Okay, we're going to go back up to sprites. Insert sprite. We're going to create a little character sprite and a little enemy sprite. So edit sprite, new 3232. Uh, our placeholder hero is just going to be a circle. Like that. Give him little eyeballs and um, a smiley. Fill the eyeballs slightly. There we go. This is our hero. Hooray. Uh, we're going to call this S hero. We're going to center it. And OK. Now we're going to create an object for our hero. Insert object. Select hero as the sprite. Uses physics. Now it is a circle, but that thing is going to roll away on us. So we're going to change that to a box. OK, same deal, because most games use boxes. So that's good enough. Add event. Create. Uh, control. This is one of the most important features. You should always remember it. Under the control tab is this here. Execute code. Uh, we want this thing to not rotate, but I'm going to save that for another day. So here's where you put anything you want on creation. Now this guy's um, our hero. So uh, what should I give this guy? Um, uh, nothing. We're going to do this extremely lazy. OK, so density. We're going to leave these all default. And oh, yeah, we got to name this guy. Oh, hero. There we go. We got ourselves a hero. Give him the parent of our physics parent so that it can collide. And then go, OK. And then we're going to create another object. Insert sprite. Uh, edit sprite. New sprite. 32. Boom. We're going to create a little destructible. And derp, and derp, and now we just uh, white wash our little middles here, and we give ourselves a little bit of a little top. Boom! It's a vase, and uh, just for shading. Uh, whatever. Uh, vases are kind of brownish, so. We'll just fill this with brown. Uh, let's see, where's our shader? Opacity, change this to 64. Come on, four. Blend, uh, we're gonna select our white. You don't have to do this. This is just something 
to do if you want to do some stuff. And we're just gonna go like it for some highlights. Just uh, little highlights. And then I'll select our black. And then eh, eh, like this. There, we got a pot. Eh, we got a piece of shit, but it's a pot. Um, S pot. There we go. Center. Okay. Create an object. Insert object. Select the S pot. We're going to call it O pot. Uh, parent. Physics parent. Uh, uses physics. Modify shape. This one we also definitely want to be a box. Make sure it's fully wrapped. Um, this thing we're going to have as zero density because we don't want it uh, moving on us at all. So, okay, we're going to go okay. So we're on our way already. Uh, let's create some more sprites. Uh, edit sprite, 32, whatever, whatever, whatever. This one's just going to be a little bullet. Um, now you might want, you might be thinking like Mega Man or something, and oops, uh, change token capacity back up. Uh, you might be thinking Mega Man or something, and it's just like, eh, a bullet. Um, there, that's a bullet. This doesn't look good. Like, even in-game, it will not look good as a bullet. So, uh, it's like, it's just an anomaly. Even even as trash, it doesn't look good. So for our bullet, we're going to do something else. We're going to make just, oops, we're going to pick our darkest red. Yeah, excuse me. We're going to do just four little pixels like this. And then we're going to pick our light red. And we're going to put two little pixels here. And then we're going to use the line tool to draw a line. Just so that we don't accidentally overwrite. And now we want to blend in segments. So we're going to go 64. We're going to pick our eraser and we're just going to pick a medium size and you're just going to erase it in waves from left to right there you go that's a bullet okay check mark okay uh, we're gonna call this s bullet and here's where we might need to do some little differences uh, this thing needs to be centered on the little square that's that's probably close enough. Uh, it's not exact, but it's close enough. Actually, did I center the pot? Yes, I centered the pot. Is all this stuff centered? Okay. So, new object. We're going to call this O bullet, and likewise, it's going to be the bullet. And it's not going to be a collision parent. It's It can still do collisions, but it's not going to be part of the same group. Uh, so this will also use physics, and it'll be very light. Uh, let's call it just point 0.1. Modify its shape. It is going to be round, but it's very tiny. Very tiny. And you can't get much more detail when you're doing stuff this small. Like, that's... I kind of ruined that. Can I undo that? Yes, I can undo that. This thing's very, 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 very small. But uh, bullets should be slightly larger than advertised anyway, just so that like they can collide with things. Uh, whatever. So that's our bullet. Okay. Um, add event collision with pot. Now, control, execute. This is what we're going to do to make it destroy the pot. We're going to go... Uh, um, with... Uh, other, so that's with the other object. Oops, you need to put a bracket. Um, because we're colliding with opot, uh, the other is the opot in question. So with other, instance destroy. There we go. So there we go. So when we shoot, when opot collides with a bullet, it'll be destroyed. So now we need to make the guy shoot it. So hero, add event, uh, key press. Uh, now I like ZXC 
for testing. So we're gonna make it Z. Uh, you can use whatever controls you want. And ideally you would use a handler so you can have whatever keys you want. We're just gonna do this. So on press Z key, we're going to go var bar. Bar is just a temporary. You can call it whatever you want. You can call it I, I bar, I B, whatever. But I'm gonna call it bar equals instance create of O bullet. There we go. Um, oh, at uh, X, Y, okay. So that's gonna create an instance of our bullet at our current location whenever Z is pushed, and it's going to temporarily assign it to the value of bar. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna go bar for width uh, bar. Make sure you use the right brackets. This thing's bracket sensitive. So width bar, so basically only the instance of bullet that we just created and no other bullets. We're going to apply a physics impulse which is not how you do that. It's physics apply impulse, derp, at its center, which is x, y, and we want it to go to the right. So we're gonna make this 50. Um, if you want it to go left, when you're moving left, you would add a variable to do that, but we're not gonna do that. Because this is, this is the dumb, this is our first game, this is all you're going to do. So now we need to test to make sure all of this works. Now we're going to have to create some rooms. Now this here is how you make a room. There, done. We did it. We made a room. Settings. We're going to call this room R, because I like to start my stuff with their letter, R preloader. Uh, because it's always nice to preload one screen. Uh, just because you don't want to start right on your game in case there's a problem with your game so that you can back page or whatever. So, okay, that I just said a bunch of meaningless crap. Ignore that. But anyway, the most important things to change here are your width and height. Um, you can change the application surface in game, but it's if you're only going to use a single resolution for the whole the whole game, it's just way easier to do it in the preloader here. Uh, the most important thing is your image aspect ratio, not the actual resolution. So if I want to use, say, a Game Boy Advance uh, image aspect ratio of 1.5, let's start with a nice 720 by 480. There we go. That's a 1.5. Um, so that'll work. Uh, we can enable physics, but it doesn't matter for this. Uh, we don't need views. We don't need anything else. But we do need to add our object for um, run once, which I did not create. But that's okay, because I don't think you even need it. But yeah, I think you need it. Okay. So we're going to create a new object for our run once. Uh, object run once. Give it our sprite of our run once and add event um, on step end step so that it happens well after it's already been created. And it's going to be simply room go to next or er, room next. Um, oh yeah, now we're going to learn how to use the tutorial because I forgot how to room next. This is important. Everything here is here. It's like you want to do something. Everything's in the documentation. Now you get to see the documentation. Uh, okay. Uh, room, blah, 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 blah. Room go to. Room go to next. Okay, there we go. That's what we want. Room 
go to next. There you go. Okay, that was me. Okay, I'm not. I'm not gonna lie. That was me pretending that I didn't know, just so that you know. So what this does is, once it runs, it just skips to the next room, and nothing else. Now we just gotta add it to this room. Boop. There we go. Now what that'll do is that'll send us to the next room. So we need to create a room. Room four. We're gonna call this. This is gonna be our main game. So I'm gonna call this our sandbox because this is what we're going to work with um, the width and height can be whatever you want so I'm just gonna make it extra 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 large give it a nice 60 FPS as everybody likes high frame rate turn the physics on uh, you can use the default settings for now uh, views are important we're gonna enable the use of views visible when room starts so um, expand please there we go you can see this outline that's our view and zoom way out this is our whole room and this is an entire like giant screen but we're going to change the resolution now um this is the trick is you have to have the same image aspect ratio as you as your application surface so we're going to use 360 by 240. 360, 240. Okay. And it's going to follow the object of Ohiro. And we're going to make it have a nice big border so that it stays relatively centered. Okay. And now we have to actually add our Ohiro. So where's our object? Ohiro. There you go. And, um, well, this is, well, we don't need two of them. This is kind of not very good looking. It's just, just an empty square with nothing in it. So we're going to go to our tiles. We're going to use my Oryx tile set, although you can use whatever you want. It's 24 by 24, so we're going to change the snap to 24 by 24. I'm just going to use these greens, and then you can just uh, shift-click and draw these around. Draw a little platform. Uh, we're going to... Just draw some nice backgrounds to make sure the player can't go anywhere. Uh, there's some trees. All right, we'll put some fences. Oops, undo. Put some fences. Going to add another layer. Undo, derpy, derpy, derp. Uh, add yet another layer. We're supposed to go in the other direction. We're going to find some grass. Where's the grass at? Here's the grass. I'm just going to slide this in behind. We don't care. It doesn't have to look good. This is, this is baby's first game. And uh, there should be a shadow down here. Yep, here it is. Uh, we're, we want this to go above, so we're going to go boop uh, on top, actually. This is going to be our shadow layer. We'll just put one there, one there, one there. Um, all along like that. Actually, this one will just go, we'll go even bigger. Delete this one. There we go. This is our room. It's a dumb, but that's the room. Objects. This is where our um, O solid is going to come into play. Because uh, this is going to be our walls. But the thing with box 2D is you can scale these. So watch this. Dupe. 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 There. That's it. That's all you have to do. Just rescale these as big as you want. Like this. Oops. But not like that. And definitely not like that. If, it's, if the mouse is giving you guff, just create a new one. There, we're all covered. Oh, except for here. There we go. So these are our O solids. So nothing can go through that. Now we're going to add a couple pots. Um, there, there, and there. Three pots. And they're just going to float because why not? And check mark. We're going to go back to our pot. Uh, we want it to 
be heavy, but we also don't want it to be uh, unpushable. So we're going to increase this density to like 800. And then go, OK. So now we're going to run our program and see what happens. OK, we got a nice slow moving hero. And when we push Z, whoa. Looks like our bullet is going way too fast, and it's spinning out of control. That is a weird. So anyway, we're going to have to fix that. So bullet, uh, cancel, add event, create. We want this thing to not be rotating like a butt when it gets created. So um, uh, fixed rotation equals, no, that's not it. Uh, phi fixed rotation equals true. There we go. Now it won't rotate. Um, but it's also still going too fast. So we're going to go back over here, give it a much smaller thrust. Uh, 15. There we go. Okay. We're also going to add an event for the space bar because we want to jump. And that's again control script. It's going to be physics, apply impulse, center, which is xy, uh, and vertical is negative 150. There we go. So that's going to make us jump. And we want to move a little, So, but we don't want to get this thing all stacked with keys, so we're going to just add this to the step. Create code. This is going to be our left or right handler. So we're going to go uh, switch. Uh, key, keyboard check. No. OK. If keyboard check board uh, actually just use the arrow keys uh, VK left then physics impulse physics apply impulse X Y negative 50 zero there you go we'll just copy that for VK right, eh, 50, there we go. Oh, but this will make us go rather rapid because as we hold it, we're gonna just infinitely gain momentum, but who cares? Okay, we're gonna do one last thing. We're going to create a main object similar to our run once. So we're going to just uh, duplicate our run once. We're going to call this S main. We're going to edit the sprite, just uh, pipette this so that we can, oops, just erase where it says run once. You don't have to be perfect. See, I'm going to leave those fragments there. Go to our black small scale thing. We're just going to call this control hashtag main. There we go. And just center that. Eh, close enough. There we go, control main. And we're going to go to our sandbox. We're going to add object control main, which I didn't create because creating an object or creating a sprite doesn't create an object. So O main, sprite S main. It's going to be invisible. And add event key press of the letter R is going to restart the room. Which is room restart, not the other way around. Okay, this is, who cares? This is baby's first game. Okay, so what this says is this uh, object, our main, is going to just sit in the corner and it's going to be invisible and it's going to control all our stuff.
So let's run our program again and see what's going on here. Yeah, we got our slow moving blobby dude. We can move at lightning speed and I can jump really high. Nothing has friction. I'm spinning out of control and I can shoot super beams that don't rotate. Whoa, I'm too fast. And nothing matters. And the bullets go through walls. And I'm way too fast. And the walls were visible. So now we're going to do another thing. First off, solid. Invisible. Don't need to see that. Hero. Uh, density is going way too much everywhere. Increase the density. Uh, give him some more friction. 0.5. Create code. We don't want him spinning when he falls off a cliff. So phi fixed rotation equals true. So now he won't spin everywhere. Okay. Step. Nope. Uh, space. Uh, yeah, good enough. Okay, step. This is way too much force. So what we're going to do instead, we're going to just add a limiter. Um, I think it's phi... Um, ah, okay, phi speed x equals... Um, I forgot how to do a range. Okay, index max. Real number functions. Okay. Uh, range. I want the range. That is. I want the one that is the thing. That is the thing. Clamp. Yes, clamp. That's what I want equals clamp of negative 5 itself and positive 5. That'll keep our speed in check. We're going to copy this. Uh, we're going to do the same for y. Actually, no, we're not. Okay, so this should work. Um, we want to increase our gravity because we're a little too floaty. So we're going to go back to our sandbox, physics. Let's change the gravity to 50. OK, uh, 25. There we go. Um, and our pots need to be less bouncy. So zero restitution, some linear dampening, some friction. Um, and we don't want our bullets going through walls add event, but we don't want it to collide with the hero itself, so we're going to collide with just the solid itself. And it's just going to self-destruct. Um, instance destroy. Bracket, bracket. There we go. So now we're going to run this again. Play. There we go. We got our little dude. He's a little slower. The pot's being dumb. I can't jump at all. I don't have enough force. I can push into the pot to sort of nudge it, but it's uh, kind of going off on its own. So I think I need to increase the, fi the friction on my solids. We're gonna make this uh, 0.25, okay. And the gravity is too high to work with, so we're gonna lower that to 15. Okay, and um, our pot is not supposed to be tipping over, so create control execute code phi fixed rotation equals true. Okay, okay, okay. This should be a little better now. Yep. My speed won't go over five. Although it's hard to tell because he's not moving very fast. And I can't jump. I can't jump because I don't have enough force. Okay, so hero, spacebar, force, negative 1500. This is, this is what you do is you just guess and check, rerun, guess and check, rerun. 
So 1,500 should be a lot of... Yeah, that's enough force to jump. It's not pretty, but... Uh, this is the first game, and it doesn't matter. So, boop. I'm on top of the pot. Uh, eh. I can't push the pot because it's very heavy. But I can shoot. Boom. Okay, that was not supposed to happen. The... It bounced off of the pot. And that looks really dumb. So what we got to do is on our bullet, make the collision destroy itself as well. Instance destroy. Okay. There we go. So now the bullet will go poof. But we want it to look good. So we're going to make a little, we're going to make a little two frame animation for graphics. Edit sprite, new sprite. Now here's what we're going to do. We're going to make a little blue lightning. And we're just going to go burp like this, burp like this, and then go OK. And then we're going to right, OK, not right click. We're going to, where's duplicate? OK, there is no duplicate. So we're going to create a new, sp for OK, we're going to duplicate this somehow. I know it's here somewhere. Hit it, copy, paste. There we go. We're going to take this, and we're going to just um, erase it. So I guess I could have just used... We're going to erase everything except where its center was. But yeah, so I guess I could have just pasted it. We're going to take this little purple, and we're going to scribble... Oops. We're going to scribble over it like lightning in the other direction. There we go. So show preview... Change the speed to 60. Uh, that's too high. 45. Okay, it's stupid looking, but there, that's an animation. Center. S, um, spark. There we go. Object. Insert object. This is not going to. Actually, this is will. This will use physics, and it's going to have the. And it's going to be O spark. Sprite is spark. Add event. Create. Control, code, image speed equals 0 0.5. Yes. Okay. Modify collision shape. Get this nice and small. Not that it matters. Uh, density doesn't matter. This is not going to, this is going to use physics, but it's not going to collide with anything. Um, oh, okay. Create, we're going to give it a variable called um, life, and it's going to equal 30. OK. Add event step, control, thing. Um, image alpha equals life divided by 60. Um, okay, if life equals zero, instance destroy, destroy, there we go, so there we go, that'll make it fade out, and, oh, and life minus minus, yes, okay, create. Uh, we want this thing to be a little weird. So image blend equals choose C underscore red, C underscore white, C underscore blue, C underscore green. Uh, yeah, that should work. Okay. Uh, bullet. Uh, add event on destroy. Um, instance create x, y, uh, o spark, um, bar equals, because, uh, var, bar equals, there we go. 
And we're going to do this, we're going to repeat uh, three. Um, with bar, so just the individual thing, we're just going to close brackets there. So with bar, we're going to give this thing a little phys physics apply impulse uh, x, y, um, i random uh, 10 minus 5, just give it some range, and i random um, we're just, we're just going to go negative i random 20. Now that should create three, um, four instances of our OSPARC whenever the bullet collides with something. So we're going to see how that looks, because I probably did that completely wrong, but uh, let's see. Ah, there we go. So we got our dude. If you shoot the wall, you get some sparks. They're not the best looking, but that's what temporary graphics are for. You can destroy the pots. You can float around. Zap, 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 zap. Can't go through the pots, but you can go over the pots. You can't push them with your base speed, but because they're heavy, but if you get enough speed, You should be able to nudge them because physics. Anyway, this is the end of the tutorial. This is Baby's first game. Look at that. You got a dude, and he looks badass-ish, and you can shoot, and you get little sparks, and they wiggle. And there you go. That's the game. So what do you do with your game? You save it. File save. But how do you upload it? Like, how do you want to share this? I want people to be able to do this. So we're going to actually export it. Create application. Okay, game title. Baby Sandbox. Uh, today is January 4th, so we're going to call it version J4. And you need to have a screenshot. So uh, you do need a screenshot, and we don't have a screenshot. So we're going to not do this part just yet, but I will upload this when I'm done the video. But basically, you select a screenshot, and you do have to actually have one. You go public, enter game description, locks tutorial, baby's first game, sandbox. And we're gonna go genre action, genre platformer, genre example, there you go. And then you go, then you click create, and then you must provide. But yeah, that's what you do. And then it gets uploaded. Now, sometime tomorrow, you should be able to play this and go, oh, that's dumb, but you can also upload your own because that's it. That's all the steps for making your very first game. And that's been the tutorial. So thanks for 